take one. Okay. A little something a little different today. Yeah, I gotta play with my new sword that we'll do a review on later sometime. So, how 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 do you fight with dissimilar weapons? The manuals don't cover it a whole lot. Not really. You know why? Because what they teach you will work. You just have to apply what you already know. Like our last video. Topic of the video, applying what you already know. Yeah. So, luckily, base weapon fighting is what we do most. Like, most of the time, do second longsword, but we moved it on a bit. But. Yeah, normally this is our main matchup. Wait when it comes to steel one-handed swords. Oh, for sure. I've always been more cut-oriented, and he's been always been more thrust-oriented, so... This seems like a perfect... I feel like we're qualified to talk about this. <laughs> we're qualified to talk about this. We're allowed to. <laughs> Alright, so, let's get into it. Make let's just jump right in. <laughs> let's just jump right into it, right? <laughs> Alright. So, mixed weapon fighting pretty much comes down to playing your game better than they can play theirs. Yeah, it's either playing your game... It really depends on the weapon. But playing your game better than they play theirs, or rather forcing them to play your game. Like for me, I can't really force him to play my game. I have to play mine better than he plays his. He can very easily force me to play his. For example, he's just point four. I can just rush in here past his point and he can't do much besides. Like my point's well past him, there's not a lot I can do. I have to close in as well. This is his territory. It's a prime example too, I get into my cutting distance, past his point of thrusting us, you have to be at a distance where you are away, right? Yeah. So, I need to get into cutting distance, therefore, I have to get past his thrusting distance. I'm like, that's not going to do anything, this is not going to do anything, he's safe. If it did do anything, I think you, you'd be dead either I way. I probably would be. Let's switch sides, because uh, we're other sides of the Right. There we are. Okay. So. So, what he did there is, right, so... For Rapier specifically, I'm very mobile in my point. So if he does that little hanging takeout, I can of course just dip around it, but if I do, he can just keep moving back and forth like this, which is rather hard to deal with. And even if I throw a cut in an act of desperation, that's he, my game. Yeah, I've been forced to play his game. And now... I'm screwed here. Yeah. We have to close, and his she weapon's better at closing. Open. Then you get into grappling, and that's a whole other thing that I don't want to cover, because <laughs> I'll get thrown. <laughs> okay, so, minor interruption, where we left off was, um... Controlling your style of fighting is important. Yeah, so, as I was saying, I need to be in this distance to do what I, I am good at. He has to be at this distance to be what he's good at. So, I... <laughs> He's not seeing any of our boats with these weapons. He's running backwards while I'm just chasing him like a maniac. But, because I need to control my game. Because oftentimes I'm just running backwards and I get a cut to the leg and that's how I get him most of the time. It's not even a thrust, right? No, I can probably count on one hand the amount of time I've gotten a thrust off on him. It's always cuts. And it's because my I lead with my legs, that's just it. Well, if you're running forward, you can't leg forward. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay, you have so to do the banana peel. The banana peel. <laughs> and whereas, for me, of course, I have a mobile point. If he's just thinking of going for my blade, I can be a little more risky. Because if he's just going for this, that does give me a tempo to launch off of something. Now, of course, he has to do some sort of really committed parry, which gives me time to faint into something else. And this exact thing is what happens a lot. Like That's typically how I get him. Right, so run through that again. Your points forward, I commit there, I have to go here, faint, lower leg, it's always just leg two. I, yeah. Like, there's nothing specific here. I know the basics, I know how to apply them. Where is he, where is he not? What is his weapon good at, what is his weapon not good at? I can't play thrust games. For example, if I try to play like a thrust game like this, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> You're done. And, since Broadsword specifically has no quillins, uh, getting a committed, like, my point can slip off, and it can sometimes lead to this slipping off and still hitting him. And then double E, and then, eh, gross stuff. Yeah, that's not a very, it can thrust, but it's not really designed for it. No, not at all, it's cut range. Whereas this can cut, not really designed for it. I mean, don't do that! <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I can still thrust with this thing, but it's not what it should be. It's not what it's good at. Nah. Nah. That can cut, but it's not what it's good at. Mm -hmm. And that's basically Connie one hand sword versus rapier or longer side sword. And that leads in. That's just different styles of fighting. So now we're going to go with different lengths and different. Different weapons entirely. Like, he has. I cannot bind with this. I now have a reach and power advantage. Right. I can do everything he can do with better. So I have to play a really dangerous game. So the one thing that I know I can do, so if he throws a cut up here, I have to do this committed active carry, lead that off, grapple, and into a cut. That is, I've pulled it off like twice. Now of course, any good long sword is going to expect that. So he does that parry. I can turn it into something else. And then I, I close here, and then I have no binding for presence at all, so I have to be active with all my parries. I can't do any kind of dedicated half cut. For longsword, it's pretty certain the longsword is going to act first, unless they really want you to attack. So, when baiting out that attack, for with a shorter handed weapon, normally, if he sees, in a previous video, he knows what guard I'm in, he knows what my most likely attack is going to be. So if he goes into his high parry up here while doing a step forward, He's already prepared that attack. And if, say, he's up there and I go where he's not expecting, he already has that line covered. So if I go down there, or rather if I'm not going to his weapon on this side, he already knows I'm going down there. So he can just parry that while stepping forward. Right? I would say he has the advantage here, because his hand's already free. So he can bring that. Now, of course, I'm going to be doing a lot of cuts and faking them into something else and not giving him that. Yeah, basically, you have to pre-game really hard when you're fighting a longsword. We've both done it a few times with the people in our club. Yeah, we fight longsword versus single sword all the time. That's how we uh, broke the first one, right? Yeah. Uh, how we've usually done it is... How it usually goes is the longsword user is being very cagey because they don't know what to do, and then you just start sniping at their hands and force them to do something. Right. And when it, they do something, you can do that parry, and then actually get that good attack on that's typically how we find it goes. And again, that's no specific techniques for this versus that. You can do that in the skill set you're taught. This is applying to something else. Yeah, this season, is, well, again, playing my game better. I can be closer than he can, because if he has a reach, right? If I get past his point, he can still do something, but not as well as I can do something. Mm -hmm. That's playing my game and why I have to close really aggressively with the single sword. And that's why this is also useful in your offhand. Like if I had a buckler too, it would... Yeah, if he has a buckler yeah. or a dagger, this is a far more even than that. Okay, so I have, a, I have my imaginary oh. buckler here. Right, so I can I can close like this. And he's close to the entire upper openings. I can't really dip down because there's points there, and he can always just lower those, right? My, my buckler is here still, right? So, so I'm, I kind of am forced to attack that opening, but of course... He knows that. He knows I'm probably going to go there, so we can just parry that. And by that point, we're already here, and I have a buckler in my mouth. That or so. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it hurts either way. Yeah. I have to be very deceptive and really fast with my cuts. I don't really want to thrust. I can, absolutely. If I see an opening, I can get a quick thrust off. This is more profitable to throw a cut and bank it into something else. Because thrusts are easy enough to defend alone. Like, I can do that without a sword. Like, a thrust can be Yeah, bad. a thrust, can, no matter what kind of weapon you use, thrusts can be defended with, like, a single finger. Oh, I'm uh, throwing away my power advantage. Yeah. In sum. Play your game. Yeah, play your game better. Better than they play theirs. Or rather, force them to play your game because you're better at it. And know thine enemy. Know thine enemy. Now, if you want to pick up that long sword. I hate this matchup. Oh, we, I've done this before. This matchup sucks. I, I all I have to do. All I have to do is I try to cut to his arm and just void anything he throws. And that I, I have the speed. Because we have similar, I have actually more reach than him. Guaranteed. Not only because my weapon's longer, but I'm taller. But normally a rapier is going to be as long or maybe a little longer than a longsword. Indeed, yeah. So what I want to be doing in this matchup is probably, again, Closing past his points before he can do anything. I'm good at I'm good at point stuff. He has a lot of power and a lot of speed, so he wants to get my point similar to how he does in broadsword, right? Then here, even if I dip under, longsword can do that too. It's just not as good at it. 
I can still play a point game with him. I can Absolutely. still bind, but it's not. That's not like an abroad sword. Yeah, he can just bind my weapon and rush me. And like, if I dip under, he can still turn that into a parry and just chase me with his point. His weapons aren't too dissimilar. A lot less than people think. The only difference really is the blade presence and the cutting ability of the rapier. Yeah, I have a lot less blade presence. So as a rapier user, once again, similar to broadsword, I'm gonna throw pop shots at his arms and force him to do something stupid. Some committed parry. If he does some committed parry like that, I'm gonna really whirl this big cut and sell it. He goes up to do something about it. I don't have this opening. And then I'm in, this is uncomfortable for me, especially being left-handed. This is uncomfortable for me, and this is where he can get me a longsword. I find here or cut to my upper opening. And like if I have a dagger, that's great. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just whole thing is just playing your game how you, how it's designed to be played, right? Yeah. This don't is play his game. Yeah, this is designed cutty bind weapon. Play it like a cutty bind weapon. So cut. Oh, I'm gonna bind maybe. So here, oh, then I'll bind and I'll wind. Yeah, that's right. how I'm supposed to play that. If he uses a longsword like a rapier, what's better at being a rapier, a rapier or a longsword? I don't like this. <laughs> if I'm doing rapier versus longsword, and I try to use this like a longsword, what's better at being a longsword, a longsword or a rapier? Precisely. It's just playing the game. I know my skill set. I know what this can do. I have to apply that to this situation. There are no, yeah, there are kind of a few, but they're not really worth mentioning very specific techniques that work in different weapon or dissimilar weapon matchups. Like we showed earlier with the broadsword uh, like against a longsword, like just closing like that. Yeah. That's, that's a very specific technique to that kind of matchup. But most often than not, the basics will take you the farthest. Knowing what you can do and playing it well. Yeah. Be better. <laughs> just be better. Just be better. Oh, protect yourself better. Protect yourself better. <laughs> This will break if I do. Yeah, that, that will break. That's a day away from just shattering. Oh, God. It's going to explode. Oh, for sure. Enjoy making them. Enjoy teaching. So, yeah. If you have requests, send them over. We'll get a topic done. We'll probably do it, too. Yeah. yeah. We don't plan these. <laughs> no, we... Who writes these? Who makes all these? Like, no, we don't plan. We just show up day of. What are we filming? Oh, we can do this? Okay, start recording. We'll improvise. <laughs> There is no script. There is nothing. I... Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. video's over. You can go. Yeah, you can go. We've just been rambling on yeah. this whole time. Goodbye. Bye. Enjoy videos.